Okay, so here's our setup from the side angle. And there's our polarizing filter. You can see the light kind of bouncing off there. I'll hold it right overhead. And we have our second polarizing filter, which depending upon the angle, will determine how much light makes it through. So currently this is at 90 degrees, and you can see there's a minimum of light intensity. And then here's at zero degrees, or 180 degrees. So what's going to happen then is, as we put our solutions in here, from 5% to 10% to 15 to 20, it's going to change how that light makes it through the second filter. So if we take the 20% and set that on there, now when I hold this, at 90 degrees, it's letting more light through. And in order for me to block out that light, I need to rotate it slightly so that it becomes darker. So here's 90 degrees. Here's a little more than 90 degrees. And so we can see that the plane of the polarization of the light has been rotated as it passes through this chiral sample. So this sugar solution is able to affect the plane polarized light. Now, as I go from 20 to 10 to 5, the 5% solution is not going to do that as much because there's not as much chemical present. So here is the, I've got quite a bit of glare here. Here is the 90 degree, and you can see that only a slight rotation gets you darker, and then after that it gets lighter again. And so this is not going to rotate that angle by as much, and in fact we would expect that as we move, from here to here to here to here, as long as these heights are consistent, that the amount of rotation would change linearly by looking at the angle versus the amount of chemical passed through. I'm going to walk you through how the polarimeter actually works. We're going to start with no polarimetry. We're just going to look at what kind of light polarization is. So this is a polarizing filter. It's a piece of plastic that's been stretched in one direction. And light is a, is a wave that is traveling where it has an electric field oscillation in one direction for each of the light waves that's propagating. And so this filter is set up to block out the light waves where that oscillation is in a certain direction. Now, the second filter, we had two of them, what we can do is we can arrange them like this where all the light being polarized by this one is in the same plane of polarization as the second one. Or you'll notice that as I rotate them it becomes darker and darker, or lighter and lighter. So it becomes darker and darker now because these are at 90 degrees. So one of these filters is blocking out electric field oscillations in one direction, the other is blocking out electric field oscillations in the other direction. So net, they're blocking out all the white incident upon them, okay? or incident through them. So, so if we had an eyeball here, we wouldn't see any light coming through here, and, and that's what you're seeing here when I wrote hold them like this. Now, in a polarimeter, what you do is in between these two, you have some kind of cylinder, that you fill with a chiral sample. So the chiral sample is a sugar solution or something, and what's going to happen is the light that comes through here that has electric fields blocked up up and down but is letting them pass through left to right or into the board and out of the board is the way I've drawn it here, that's going to rotate the plane of polarization. So when we talk about the plane of polarization, what we mean is, is we mean what, what uh, direction the electric fields are oscillating in. So in this case, electric fields are going to be oscillating into and out of the plane of the board. That's the plane of that polarized light. What happens in here is that plane is going to start kind of going from this, and it's going to rotate a little bit. And so instead of meeting this polarizing filter where the light, polarized light is at 90 degrees, the angle of that plane of polarization has been rotated. Now what that means is that essentially this has caused this polarization here to be rotated almost as if we were taking that polarizing filter and rotating it like this. The combination of this and this is the same thing as taking this and then having to rotate it. Now the more chemical I have, or what chemical I have, will determine how much that rotation is. But we can measure that really easily by our second filter because if our thing rotates, we can see the light intensity change. So as I'm holding this, if this is rotating, then you're going to see the light intensity change. And the more that light intensity changes can be detected at the far end here. The other way we can do this with our, with our home sample is, is we can actually take the second filter and say, okay, well you rotated this much, well I'm going to rotate this much as well. 
And then I'm going to measure, okay, well, how much did I rotate this? And so we can actually get an angle of the rotation of the plane of polarization. That's what a polarimeter measures. And it just does that really simply by taking light, polarizing it. Then the sample rotates the plane of polarization. Then a second filter will be used with the detector to figure out how much light is making it through or how much this filter needs to be rotated to continue where no light is passing through. So here we have two polarizing filters and these are currently perpendicular to one another. So if I move them like this you can see that there's a very intense light coming through. That as I rotate them that light gets blocked out by the second filter. So what's happening here is these are now perpendicular. So the first filter is letting through uh, plain polarized light that's polarized in one direction. Okay. The second filter I can rotate so it lets through the same plane of polarization or I can rotate to block that light out. The way a polarimeter works is that it takes these two polarizing filters and then in between it puts a sample that's chiral. So here we have a 5% galactose solution. So when I put this in between the two filters, okay, so currently here is the filter without that, what you're going to see is that there's going to be a rotation of that plane. So now when I rotate this, it's going to change from being where it is now to being slightly darker. Looks like I'm off center a little bit. That's not coming through very well. It's not rotating enough for me to detect. Let me try a solution that's a little more concentrated. So you can see that here is where there are 90 degrees. And then when I rotate this, it becomes darker. And so we're looking at an angle now where the plane of polarization has been rotated from before. And so now this angle we can measure, um, crudely at least, uh, so if we were to hold up a protractor and say, okay, here's the original 90 degree angle, and now we've rotated it this much, we could then figure out how much the plane of polarization has been changed from when there was no sample to when the sample was present. Okay. As we go through and go from a concentrated solution to a less concentrated solution, that angle that we were required to change it's going to become less and less. So if I put a 10%, we would expect to see at the same height a smaller rotation necessary. And so you can see that a smaller rotation gets me to the minimum, and then it starts to get brighter again. And so that's how a polarimeter works, is it's able to measure the amount of an optically active solution by how much the plane of polarization needs to change to get to a minimum, back to a minimum, between the two polarizing filters, compared to when there's no sample present.